Hey everybody! After finishing Kinseed, I got really curious if we could beat the last level of Toughwood without using any mods or by uprooting. And I found out that, yep, we can. In the beginning, it was indeed hella tough, but I got some tips and tricks for you to make it a breeze. Honestly though, you can still get 5 star loot to the 6th difficulty level, so going beyond that is rather pointless if you're just trying to farm for some materials. But, whether you're going to tough wood for leveling your sword in preparation for the Jabberwock, farming materials for skill leveling in preparation for the Jabberwock again, or you just want that game achievement, then here's everything that you need to know about tough wood from the preparation to the actual combat. There's a number of things that you need to prepare to say that you're ready for the last stages of tough wood. This guide will discuss the buffs and boons that you want to consider, pets, items, and weapons that you need to have, and the most important and critical of all, the mob behaviors. And at the very end of this video, I'll be showing you a complete level 10 tough wood run for strategy ideas. And to prove that this technique actually works, let's first talk about the buffs. So you know how not moving to a new generation, or what we call as uprooting, gives you the most basic stats, right? Because using your baby's life would actually give you higher stats. If you don't want to steal your baby's life, Tough wood would indeed take a while to finish because of the low base damage if you choose not to uproot. Except if you got the strength boost from Pot when you first started the game. I actually didn't do this because walking speed is my preference, so just know that it is not required to pick strength stat initially. You can still do this, so calm down, there's no need to start a new game because of this. But, that bonus is actually very handy. Another optional stat boost is Marriage. When getting married, we get a random marriage buff. It gives plus 3 of a certain stat, and what you really want to get would be either strength, accuracy, or stamina. This is also not required as when I first did this, I wasn't really married and the highest difficulty of Toughwood was still easily doable for me. But, that plus 3 stat would definitely be handy as well. What does greatly matter though is the food that you choose to master. For the food, you'd want to get higher quality of the barbels, pikes, and chickpeas because we'll be making lots and lots of creek and coop. I find it to be the best dish to compensate for the lack of stats that our OG character has because this dish increases your strength, stamina regeneration, and crit rate in battle. You want to eat that before entering the dungeon, and then quickly exiting for an autosave, and then go back in to set up your stuffs. You can also choose to master your cooking, as Mother Hubbard's fast skill gives times 3 sandwiches. This is actually really great to have because you don't want to spend too much time trying to catch 5 star barbels and pikes all the time. Last one for the buffs are the boons. To be safe, you can pray to Ialis for the 1 up boon which grants 1 resurrection in combat and resets whenever you enter a dungeon. This is highly recommended if you don't have the second wind skill yet. But the one that I highly recommend regardless of your skills is the Clumsy Critters from Arwenna, which decreases a mob's crit chance. Pets, items, and weapons. Let's move on to the stuff that you really need to have. You first want to level your melee tree to unlock the pet support skill. This skill lets you take two pets in battle. You also want to continue progressing on your melee skill tree up to the second win because that skill gives plus 1 resurrection just like the 1-up boon from Yalis. For the pets, you really need to get Filifrit because this pet boots your constitution and removes any ill effect nodes in battle. All you gotta do is catch a 3-star rainfish, buy the glasslands at Pixie's Slaughtery in Tirnanog, then head over to Peter's store in Evergreen to buy the Piscatoodle, and then go here, a little over to the left side of the map, play the Piscatoodle, and then feed Filifrit the rainfish that you caught. Along with Filifrit, you can also take a dog for plus 1 strength if you want a generally higher damage, or a cat for more damage to hags, banshees, and remnants, and for leveling your sword. I personally recommend the cat, not because I'm called Meerkat, but because you need that extra sword XP for the Jabberwock, and killing the most irritating mobs in Toughwood would also be so easy with a cat. For the items, you need to stock up on higher quality healing creams that a traveling merchant at Stone Crown sells every other week. You also need to stock up on effigies, like everything except for the Duitas because that really sucks. 
I always like to have Auroras and Marwenas just in case because these two give the most damage. They're really handy when you're in a pinch. Hialis is also alright for a healer damage gamble, and you should use this when your HP is at least slightly lowered because she tends to favor healing over damage. On the other hand, Nida and Frills are also good just to get a quick break when things do be getting tense in battle because they both do immobilization. Nida does a single target but longer immobilization, while Frail does AoE vines to stop all the mobs from attacking but this can be very quick. For the weapon, you'd want a Hyalite Sword and you can get the ores for this at the Void once you reach the Master Reputation. Honestly, it would be best to buy some Apothecaries to get this reputation going and then leave Toughwood untouched until you get this weapon. Otherwise, you'd take forever to kill a single mob. But while working on your reputation, you can always try out simple wood and mid wood to level your sword as well. The damage does get better once you get your sword level to craftsman, and don't forget to bring a cat with you for faster leveling and sweeping of mid wood. Next up are the wards and the charms. You know, you can actually get by without them once you've gotten used to the mob behaviors, but just to be safe, you'd want a copper charm and a copper ward. This increases your constitution and reduces the Banshee's scream damage. And trust me, you want to reduce that damage because it's the strongest mob skill in Toughwood. And actually being at the last levels makes the mobs go crazy fast, leaving you with less time to strategize on the positions. And it might also be difficult for you to see where the Banshee went, especially because it's very dark. And speaking of the dark, you'd actually want to replace any of those with a lantern if you plan to go to Toughwood at night. If you plan to stay at the lowest level though, then the best time to go to Toughwood would be early in the morning or when the weather is clear. But that's only for the lowest level because it will be dark regardless of the weather or the time once you get to the higher difficulty stages. But then again, going there on evenings or when it's raining only takes a couple of practice and getting used to the mob behaviors, which I will teach you next! Now that you know all of the best items, pets, buffs, and conditions for Toughwood, it's time to know about the most important and critical thing, the mob behavior. You will find 5 different mobs in Toughwood, and those are wolves, remnants, and ogres at the lower levels, night hags mostly at level 2 and above, or further into the dungeon, and banshees commonly at level 4 and above. Let's first talk about the wolves. They're very easy to kill, and it's doable to kill them in a single turn by doing a triple combo damage at the lowest level. Their skills include biting once and throwing a fireball thing at you at lower levels, and biting multiple times and at multiple spots at higher levels. But that's what you don't want to happen. I'm actually more scared of that skill than a banshee scream for real. You'd want to kill them first all of the time, especially at higher levels because they have incredible speed and those multiple attacks just freaking hurts. Next are the remnants. They're actually the most useless mob in Toughwood. They're also pretty fast to kill at lower levels, and you can finish them with a triple combo as well, except on higher difficulty levels where you need to do a couple of extra hits depending on your character's damage. But you don't need to worry all that much about remnants as their skills are pretty predictable after all. Even with enhanced speed, it's easy to see where the remnants will cast a skill because it's either that they cast 3 sword throws that you'd see beside them, or that they would cast a sword or an axe skill at a spot that's very visible even at night. So yeah, pretty useless mob. For the old gear, this one is a wee bit tougher, as you might need to do 2 triple combo damage depending on your sword level. But even at craftsman level, it still takes 1 triple combo plus 2 hits. The ogre has 3 skills. One is a stone block that you don't really need to give a hoot about. Like, okay man, keep spamming that so we can buy more time. Thanks! Another is a usual melee attack, nothing too fancy. And lastly, we have a ranged attack where it pitches a rock at you. And oh boy, don't be fooled by this. It might seem like a simple skill, but it gets crazy fast and it hurts a lot at higher levels. So it's best to kill an Ogier after killing all the wolves. Or maybe after killing all the wolves and the remnants, cause they're pretty soft. And moving on to the night hags. I honestly don't mind their existence all that much, because forest hags and simple wood are actually more irritating than the night hags. This one is just so predictable. So I'd say just kill all the wolves, and then all the ogres, and then kill the night hacks. 
And like the ogre, you would need a triple combo plus a couple more hits for this. Its skills are pretty simple too. It has a melee skill damage that you don't want to hit you ever. But it's also quite easy to see which direction the night hag goes. So, yep, all good. It also has a range damage by summoning a meteor or a stone or whatever that is that falls. And it's pretty slow even at the highest level. So it's also quite easy to avoid. Lastly, it summons a remnant. Not that big of a deal. And we also have the most hated mob in game. The Banshee! It's actually easier if you kill the Banshee for less because it's pretty useless and predictable when it's alone. But you can always kill it after the gear. It has three skills that you gotta pay attention to. Number one is the infamous Banshee Scream. This one deals a hell of a lot of damage even when you're using a copper ward. When casting the skill, the Banshee suddenly disappears, making it hard to keep track where it'll be screaming. So try not to move too much when you see it casting. Next, we have a bubble shield thing that the Banshee casts. They will occasionally cast a small bubble to any other mob on the field to protect them from damage. You don't want to waste your stamina on mobs that has this because after a quick while, the bubble disappears and you can deal damage again. So what to do when the mob has a bubble shield? You can momentarily switch your target so you don't waste your stamina regeneration. This is alright, as most mobs at level 4 difficulty and above takes more than one triple combo. Next we have a ranged skill that deals multiple massive damage where it throws a couple of hollow skulls at you. It's easier to see where this lands though, compared to the scream that is. Oh, and like the ogre, it also puts an ill node, but it's nothing that Philifrit can't remove. Here's a couple of things to remember. Kill all the wolves first because they're soft and irritating. Make good use of the positions by going to the furthest north or south so that the enemies don't reach you at all. Or well, your stamina would be full before they even get to you. And before you go to the higher levels of Toughwood, you might want to finish the lowest level first and then work your way up to level 4 difficulty with a complete run. Once you get really used to their skills at level 4, move up to 6 or 7 because that's where it gets faster. And then after that, levels 8 to 10 would be the actual nightmare. But if you really want to finish Kinseed, then you have to defeat the Jabberwock. And that also means that you have to get used to the last levels of Toughwood, because that's where the battle starts. Alright, you can now call me Master Dragon because he's pretty useless when it comes to combat tips, and I've been thinking of replacing him. What do you think? No? Okay. Anyways, to end this video, here's a complete level 10 Toughwood run without effigies for your reference and strategizing. Boons use their only clumsy creature, buffs are Creek and Coop Sandwich, Conditions are nighttime and raining. For other stats, my pets are cursed right now, but I would've picked a cat plus Philifrit. There are no marriage buffs. Skills are also not complete. And my sword is a level 5 craftsman.